Now let's move on to the second questions in this series of transformation questions. Now here we have a diagram as well. We have shapes A, B, and C. It is given to you according to the question. Now let's move on to the question itself. So part one, we say shape A is mapped onto B by a reflection. So now it is given to you already. It is a reflection. So that's a good thing. Now we have to write down the equation of the line of reflection. So how would you find that? So let's first observe A to B. So you have to reflect A to B. So what I like to do is I like to observe in this way, right? It's much easier to look at this. Now we know that this point became this point, right? If that makes sense. Or this point became this point. However, the main idea is that we have to find the distance between them. Count, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the whole distance here is what? It is eight. So to find the line of reflection, it has to be exactly in between. So eight divided by two is four. So we count one, two, three, four. So as you can see, the line has to pass through this point and it only makes sense if the line will be this line. So this line will be your line of reflection y equal to minus 1. Okay? So that is your question, part A. The line will be y equal to minus 1. It is only for one mark, so it should be pretty easier. Now for part B, we have to describe the single transformation that maps shape A onto shape C. Let's observe. So here we have A onto C. Again, we have only four transformations to remember in this syllabus. We have translation, we have rotation, we have enlargement, and we have reflection. Now, by elimination, you can see that it cannot be translation, it cannot be rotation, it cannot be reflection. Why? Because the, sh the size of the shape has changed. So obviously, it has to be an enlargement. That's the first thing. Now, to define enlargement again, let me write this down. It is an enlargement we care about with the scale factor, right? So we have to write down the scale factor for that, so we don't know yet. And we have the center as well. We have to find the center that we have to find. So as always, as we have seen from question number one, what do we do in this case? So we have to first look at the corresponding size to find the scale factor. So if you observe, this side was 1. After the enlargement, this side became this side, right? If you observe, this is actually this, right? It became 3. So 1 became 3. You have to multiply by 3. So it will be 3. That's the first thing we do. However, it is not done yet, so please be patient. I will explain what happens in between. Now, how do you find the center? As we have seen before, we have to join the corresponding points. We just need two of them. So we know that this point became this point, right? And then we know that uh, this point became so easier. Let's shoot this one. This point became this point. So we know that too. So let's join that for now. So first thing first, let me join those two. Right, so here we have this, joining with this. That's the first one. And then let's join this with this. So it's easier, so right here, as you can see. Right, so by joining those two corresponding points, you see that the lines meet at this point. So this will be your center of enlargement, which is minus 3, 2. So let's write this down. That will be minus 3, 2. Now, the catching point here is that because the center of enlargement is between those two shapes, the scale factor has to be negative. So that's the idea. Compared to the first question, as you can see here, the center of enlargement was outside of, it is not between them, it was outside, that's why it was positive too. But here, because it is in between them, you have to write down the scale factor to be minus 3. 
Now for part B, for part C, moving on for that, the transformation T is given by this matrix, okay? So now uh, we can understand what we are trying to do again. So the idea is that matrix times object is equal to image. So T maps shape A onto shape D, okay? So T is the matrix, minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1. And the object is A. So let's write down the points of A again. So very easy. Five, minus 5, 1, minus 6, 1, minus 5, 2, minus 6, 3. So let's write this down. This is the points of the shape A. Minus 5, 1, minus 6, 1, minus 5, 2, and minus 6, 3. So let's find the corresponding or the resulting points for your shape of D. This is A, we have to find the shape D, right? So that will give you, so as you can see, minus one times this, this will be zero, so we just need to do this one. Five, so six, five, six, and this will be zero, this will be minus one, minus one, minus two, minus three. Now let's point, let's plot all those points. Uh, let's see what happens, so five minus one, that will be this one. We have uh, 6 minus 1 will be this one. And we have uh, 5 minus 2, that should be this one. 6 minus 3 should be this one. Okay, so we have this resulting shape from that matrix multiplication. Now, don't forget to label the diagram after you're done for your full marks. So this is the uh, question number two of this series. And as you can see, the takeaways will be this and how to write this, definitely. And let's move on to question number three. I will leave a link down in the comments for that question of number three.